This is the video of chapter 8 on how to construct the term structure of risk of the book Elements of Financial Risk Management by Peter Christofferson. In this chapter, we will see how to construct the term structure of risk, in particular, how valued risk and expected shortfall are constructed for different horizons such as one day, one week, two weeks, and up to a year. Why we would do that? Well, there are companies that hold very constant portfolios and then they want to know what the risk of that portfolio is going to be over a longer time period. In previous chapters, we learned the linear way. The 10-day value at risk is just the one day times the square root of 10. So this is the square root of time rule. That's the one we did on the risk metrics. We also learned how to scale the gauge volatility by using the square root of time plus some mean reversion parameter that depends on the alpha and the beta. In this chapter, we're going to learn how to generate random numbers to simulate future scenarios of the returns, hence future scenarios of risk. In particular, we learn Monte Carlo simulation, which is going to be the artificial way to generate random numbers, and filter historical simulation, which relies on historical data. Finally, we're going to cover both the univariate and the multivariate case. This is a slide that reviews previous chapters. We know that value at risk is minus the standard deviation over t plus 1 and t plus k times the inverse normal. Now, sigma t plus 1 t plus k on the risk metrics is just k times the one day variance. Hence, the value at risk is the square root. The value at risk over t plus 1 t plus k period is equal to the square root of the time times the value at risk for one day. The other methodology is to compute the sigma with the Garch 1 1 model. So in this case, sigma for t plus 1 t plus k is a function of the long run variance, k, which is the number of days, and alpha and beta, and tomorrow's variance. Then these two volatilities can either be used under value at risk, or they can also be used for expect shortfall to compute a longer time period expected shortfall. The problem is that there's no long-term variance formula for other GARCH models, so, such as N-GARCH or X-GARCH. Hence, we need to use the Monte Carlo simulation, that is, to generate random numbers. What's the intuition of this? We have there is the GARCH 101 model, and there we have the variance for tomorrow for T plus 1 that depends on omega, alpha, and beta, and the returns for day T and sigma for day t. What we're going to do is we're going to use this volatility for t plus 1 and we're going to combine it with z. Now z is a, a variable that is normally distributed, means 0, standard deviation 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to generate random numbers that are normally distributed 0, 1, let's say 1000, and then we're going to include it in this formula to generate 1000 returns. This 1000 returns with the sigma for t plus 1, we're going to include it again in the GARCH 1 1 formula to obtain sigma for t plus 2. And then we're going to restart all over again. So sigma for t plus 2 is a function of theoretical returns, 1000 returns we obtained, sigma t plus 1. Now we're going to use the sigma t plus 2. We're going to generate again 1000 random numbers that we are going to call z i t plus 2. We multiply those two to obtain return for day t plus 2. We're going to now obtain 1,000 returns for day t plus 2. We include these two in the Garch formula to obtain sigma t plus 3. And then we can continue doing this up to horizon k. What is the summary of what we're doing? We start with sigma at t plus 1. We generate 1,000 normal random numbers to produce 1,000 returns and we repeat the steps until time k. That means we generate sigma for t plus 2, 1,000 of those. Then we generate new random numbers. We get new returns with this formula. Then we get new sigmas with this formula, and we keep going until time t plus k. Therefore, the k day return is going to be the summation of the returns from t plus 1 up to t plus k. If we have 1,000 Monte Carlo scenarios, that means we're going to have 1,000 returns t plus 1, t plus k. Hence, we have a distribution of these returns. So to compute the value at risk, we're going to use that distribution, and we're going to take the 1 percentile of this data series to obtain the 1% value at risk for the horizon up to t plus k. For the expected shortfall, we're going to take the returns that are lower than minus var and average them out. These graphs show what this methodology produces. In the first graph, today's variance is half the long-run variance. Hence, the VAR will increase with the horizon. 
In the second graph, the initial variance is three times the longer in variance. Hence, the var will increase at the beginning and then it's going to decrease with the horizon. How is exactly done the random number generation? So how, are, how do we generate ZIT? The first methodology is called the Monte Carlo simulation. This is the artificial way. Basically, we need a computer to generate this ZI that are normally distributed. The Excel formula for this is we generate a random number between 0 and 1. Aleatorio would be the function in, in Spanish. This random number is a pseudo probability since it's between 0 and 1. Then we put it into the normal inverse standardized distribution and that way we're going to get the values that are going to be normal 0, 1 distributed. The second methodology is the filtered historical simulation. So here what we do is we standardize all the returns by their volatility from a model such as GARCH or realized variance. Then the standardized returns has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation close to 1. Note that here we're going to have, have about 500, let's say, historical returns. And then what we're going to do is we're going to draw with replacement from these returns to generate our scenarios. We can generate in either of the two methodologies 10,000 random numbers. Note that even though here we might have 1,000 or 500 returns, we can still generate 1,000 random numbers given that we do the draw with replacement. The Monte Carlo for portfolios, we start by showing a portfolio that has two securities. So security 1 and security 2. Security 1 has W1 weight and W2 is for security 2. So the return of the portfolio is the sum of the weighted returns. If we want to do this on the Monte Carlo simulation to generate several returns for the portfolio, we can first assume that we have uncorrelated Z1U and Z2U. That means there's no correlation when we generate the return. So in that case, we will just generate independently R1 and R2, let's say 1,000 scenarios, and we just weight them, and that way we obtain the return for the portfolio. However, the correlation between 1 and 2 is not zero. So the question is, how do we correlate this Z1U and Z2U. So what we're going to do is we're going to now the U for the uncorrelated. So the Z1 is going to be equal to the Z1 uncorrelated. And the Z2 is going to be a function of the correlation between security 1 and security 2. Z1, the uncorrelated one, and Z2, the uncorrelated one. So what this is going to produce is two sets of random numbers Z1 and Z2 that are going to have a correlation rho 1, 2. And this is the formula that you need to be able to build in that correlation, row 1, 2. Once we have Z1, Z2, we're going to update variances. We're going to compute the new returns, just like we did before. And that way, we can keep doing that until time k. And then we obtain the var and the expected shortfall once we have the t plus k returns. For the Monte Carlo, for portfolios, the general formula is this one. So we have the return that is d, which are the sigmas, times a z, which is the normal distributed variable. And it has a covariance, rt, which is symbolized by this sigma, or d times upsilon times d, where we have that the expected value of z, z transpose, is the correlation matrix, which is the same one down here. So one in the diagonal, row one, two in the off diagonal. But we also know on correlated random numbers, this would be the correlation matrix, so zero in the day off diagonal. What we want to do is to decompose the upsilon, the correlation matrix, into this square root matrix. So that the square root matrix times its transpose, it's equal to the correlation matrix itself. Why do we want to do that? So that when we have this square root matrix and we multiply it by the matrix of uncorrelated random numbers, we're going to obtain correlated random numbers. Remember that what we're trying to do is to generate correlated random numbers when we have a portfolio with several securities. And here you see the explanation, and this is that the expected value of z, z transpose, it's equal to the expected value, and then at the beginning we had upsilon times, so we had this upsilon times upsilon square root transpose, then we put in the middle the identity matrix, and then what we obtain is upsilon at the end. But then this part, or this part, either one, it's going to have correlated random numbers. In the two-asset case, this would be the way to look at the upsilon square root matrix. So it's also called the lower triangular matrix. And you can see that it has the terms 1, the correlation, and the square root of 1 minus the correlation squared. 
and zero in the upper part since it's a lower triangular matrix. And then that's how we would recover the Z1 and Z2 that we saw before. So it's basically the upsilon square root matrix times the uncorrelated ZUs. If we have n greater than two assets, this Cholesky decomposition is going to give you the square root matrix or the lower triangular matrix. In the Excel file, the Cholesky decomposition is done via a function that I put there that is called equal Cholesky2. So this is the summary for the multivariate Monte Carlo simulation. The most important step is how the correlated random numbers are converted with the uncorrelated random numbers and the Cholesky decomposition matrix, the square root matrix. So this is the most important part. So first we need to generate ZUs for each one of the variables we have. So here if you generate have 10 variables and you want to generate 1000 random members, the matrix would be 1000 times 10. Then we decompose the correlation matrix by using the Cholesky decomposition. And then by multiplying those two, we are gonna obtain a Z that has correlated random numbers. And then we do the same steps. We update variances for each asset. We compute the returns for each asset and we keep doing this until t plus k so that we obtain the k day return. So we have several securities. We have the k day return for each one of the individual securities. We're gonna do the weighted average to obtain their portfolio return. And the value at risk is gonna be the percentile of that portfolio return. And the expected shortfall is gonna be the average of the returns that are lower than minus var. Finally, the multivariate filtered historical simulation. So we saw the univariate case. In the univariate case, what we do is we take the return, the historical returns we have, and we standardize it by its given sigma. Let's say we have 500 of those, hence we're gonna have 500 Zs that where we can draw with replacement to generate as many random numbers as we want. In the multivariate case, we're gonna have several securities from one to n. Each one of these ones correspond to a different security. So this would be company one, company two, company n that are standardized returns. So we have 500 of these ones and we can draw also with replacement for all of them to be able to reprice our portfolio. At the end, we can generate 10,000 random numbers. We update variances, compute the portfolio return the same way we did in the Monte Carlo simulation to be able to compute value at risk and expected shortfall. It's important to note that in the multivariate case, these Zs always, you have to take them for the same day. So you cannot start mixing different days. And you see here that the T variable is the same for all returns. So if you take for day tau equals two, then this would be t plus tau minus two, and this one as well, and this one as well. So they would correspond to exactly the same day. The conclusion of this chapter is that we learn how to compute value at risk and expect a shortfall for horizons greater than one day, say six months. We review how to do it by multiplying the var value at risk of one day by square root of t, then we saw the Garch version of it, which is square root of t plus some mean reversion component. And finally, we saw that we need random number generation to generate numbers to be able to construct future scenarios of our portfolio. How do we generate random numbers via Monte Carlo simulation or filtered historical simulation? And we saw this in the univariate and multivariate cases by using the Cholesky decomposition. Thanks for watching. Bye.